Welcome to the PartyPoker.net World Open. Coming up tonight, some of the best players in the world meet around the poker table, looking to bluff, bully and steal all the chips. Only one of tonight's players moves into the semi-final and stays in contention for a piece of that half a million dollar prize pool. Good evening, I'm Jesse May here with the cowboy, Kenna James. <laughs> Good evening, Jess. Great to be here sitting next to you for this exciting match we have on hand for the Party Poker World Open. Kenna, you know me, I'm a sickie for poker, but some days it's like, <laughs> pinch me, I'm dreaming, and pinch me, I must be dreaming. Well, it's easy to get sick over this lineup filled with top-notch pros. We're in for an exciting tournament tonight. Can't wait to cozy up to the rail, so let's see who's filling the shoes. My name's Brian Little, uh, I'm in Belfast. I won it in the satellite in Winners Club in Belfast, 200 pound satellite, and I won the 40 seater, and had a ticket here. Tony Bloom, uh, I'm nicknamed The Lizard. Um, I have been playing poker for about 16 years. My biggest two wins are a couple of years ago in Melbourne, won the Aussie Millions and last year, 2005 in London, I won the VC Cup. I could be the most aggressive, I could be the least aggressive. Um, one thing you'd be sure of, I'll be trying 100% to win, I'll be doing everything I can to get as much advantage as I can to, to win the satellite and move on. My name's Mark Goodwin, um, nicknamed Mr Cool, which was given me. <laughs> um, I've been playing on the actual circuit only for just under a year now. Um, currently European number two. The day that I don't start getting a shot of adrenaline from uh, playing cards is the day I'll stop. I'm Achilles the Don Kalakis, been playing for three years. Uh, play events all over Europe and Las Vegas. I play to win, I'm not playing to pass the time. I am playing aggressively to win today and to, and to win the whole tournament. My name's Tim Flanders. I've been playing poker for about six years. I was hoping I'd, I'd get an easy heat. Um, obviously, somebody must have heard I was hoping that because they decided I wasn't going to. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a tough table. My name's Roland DeWolf. I've been playing poker for three years, uh, seriously, and I'm from London, UK. 27 years old. Over the last two years, I've been the biggest money winner from the UK. The biggest money winner in 2006. I have Won one World Poker Tour event, made two final tables, uh, including I came third in the World Poker Tour final table championship this year at Bellagio. Of course you want to win. I mean, I'm not here. I'm not. Second and sixth are exactly the same. They're loser positions. Wow. Is it even possible, Kenneth, to pick a favorite? Hold on to your seats, boy. <laughs> I tell you, it feels like an earthquake in here when you have a lineup like we are blessed with tonight. I've been, had the pleasure of playing with a lot of these top-notch pros on both sides of the pond. Where do you start, like you say, Roland the Wolf? I mean, what a couple years this man has. He's the man in form in my mind. Well, I mean, he, he's winning everything right now. Tony Bloom, uh, I was playing with him. I finished third in uh, the Aussie Millions the year that he won it. Uh, Mark Goodwin, uh, you know, I, I was on the final table with him and Monte Carlo. I mean, it's just an incredible and exciting lineup we have in front of us tonight. Yeah, and I mean, in addition to all these real tough players, guys like Achilles Kalakis and Tony Bloom, for, for that matter, are specialists in this one table televised format. Well, absolutely. You, you think Achilles is going to give anything up? This guy is here to win. I, I saw him uh, in his interview, and uh, believe me, he... He's not intimidated by anyone. Don't cut out Tim Flanders either. He's played on TV before, mm -hmm. done well. And Brian Little, the Northern Irish guys are always tough. So let's get over to the table. Why? Because cards are going to be in the air and fists will be flying. Grind the organ with streetcar rag. This is not a final table, but it should be. Kenna James, look at this lineup. This is the qualifying table. A good look at Tony Bloom. Top pros around the felt today. There's Roland DeWolf. Incredible action on hand for the Party Poker World Open tonight. Only one of these top performers will move on to the semifinal and the challenge for $200,000. Who will it be? It's going to be the man in form or the man getting the cards, but in the 100,000 chips that each player starts with, those yellows, 
worth 1,000 each. The blues are two, and the reds five K a piece. 600,000 on this table, and you must get every chip to progress to the semifinals, yeah, meeting the likes of Connor no, 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 Tate and Lawrence Hi, Bonet there, but the blinds this first level will be one in 2,000. And uh, will seating position have anything to do uh, with how this table plays out? Well, seating position, very important in the early going, some light chatter, but certainly some heavy action on Pass. hand as we go down to the felt. Mark Goodwin folding ace, Ray, deuce under the gun. Two jacks by Achilles Kalakis. He brings it in a raise. Three blue chips at 6,000 to go. Three times the big blind. Tony Bloom calling with 7-9 off. As we go to the flop, Jesse May. Yeah, I think it may have been a minimum raise from Achilles. He may have tossed some yellow chips in there. And, uh, ooh. and uh, Bloom with a 7-9. Awesome. Mm -hmm. A tough flop for Achilles, though, third with two overcards. But it doesn't <laughs> intimidate... Uh, <laughs> The Don, as they That's call him, start. as he fires right out and drags the first pot, one, and we're yeah. off. You'll need to know what beats what in poker, so let's check out the ranking of hands in Texas Hold'em. Every five-card poker hand falls into the official ranking of poker hands. If you have nothing at all, you at least have a high card. Ace plays the highest. Then there's one pair. Higher than that is two pairs. Queens up beat jacks up. Three of a kind is sometimes called a set. A straight is five cards in a row of any suits, and an ace can play high or low in straights. A flush is five cards of the same suit in any order. Suits don't count. A spade flush and a hard flush is the same. A full house is a three of a kind plus a pair. Four of a kind is what it says, and a straight flush is five cards in a row, all the same suit. Royal flush is the highest hand you can get. That's a straight flush, ace high. <laughs> I do my best. When you're looking at around this table, who right now is happiest with their seat? Wow. But it's a good question, uh, Jesse May. I will out the first minute of the first day. I'll nearly do that. I will attempt to answer it uh, as we look at the action. No, I don't mind it. It's just the way it is. You've got to accept the facts. Mark Goodwin's in a very good position. He's just to the left of Tony no, Bloom, no, no. Uh, who's a very aggressive, dominating player. He's got the two amateurs on his left, so he can pick up and control the action uh, to his left. I mean, often you would say that the worst seat would be sitting right next to a chatterbox, but we've got five or six chatterboxes here, so I don't really think there's going to be a verbal advantage. <laughs> It's a uh, check, check, and now Roland the Wolves hit the pair in the big blind, and now Flanders is betting his bottom pair a little too little too soon. Well, it, it looks us as you hear the sigh from Roland the Wolf okay, making the pair of tens. He's going to give it up. First one in, sometimes take it. A nice play there by Tim Flanders. I did have a pair. That was reverse representation of the ace. Had a pair. Tim Flanders may be the uh, dark horse you have the here. You want all the information? I didn't have the The ace. underdog certainly can come through. Well, yeah, I mean, We've seen it before. Welcome back. A great lineup round the table tonight, including Roland the Edge DeWolf, who recently picked up $1 million at the Bellagio, Mark Mr. Cool Goodwin, who's topped the European rankings, and the renowned pro Tony the Lizard Bloom. This is one tough heat, and only the winner will go through to the semis. Let's get back to it. Still first level action here. Uh, I don't think Mark Goodwin has moved a chip yet, but he's got the button in his hand. Yeah. Pass. And uh, Brian Little played quite a few pots, but uh, he's had cards every time, although this 2 fours is that an optimistic holding right now? It is. An oh. interesting flat call by Tony Bloom, right. not a re-raise, playing cautiously. Re you just said Mark Goodwin hasn't played a hand. He will play this one <laughs> on the button with the two ladies' pocket queens. I'm just trying to get to an amount that when I'm looking at you, I think you pass. <laughs> 
Do you want me to pass? Mark's announce, yes. announced his intention is to hand? raise to billions of sale packs. Is, is that the way you want to think about pass. two queens on the button right now? I mean, how big should he make his re-raise? That's a good point. Pass. Probably about three times the amount uh, of the bet in front of him, at least. Well, that's what he's done. It's 18,000 more to both Little and Bloom. And, uh, wow, it really... Little folds. And Bloom rightly oh. said to him... Uh, that you must have a big hand. So uh, Tony Bloom put to the early test here as we look at the Golden Lizard. He mucks yes. his hand, and I tell you, what a quality lay down by Tony Bloom in the early going. I, I mean, and I'm this is why he is one of the top players out there on the circuit. Yeah, I mean, I'm just wondering, can I, it, it wouldn't have been a <laughs> what a comment. really untoward of Tony to have re-raised Little's bet, and then he would have gotten himself in real trouble, wouldn't you? Absolutely, because then it's harder to release your hand because you, you, you already have so much invested in the pot. <laughs> Tony Bloom has got to be noticing the hand frequency of Mark Goodwin. None of those, oh, well, actually, this last hand shown down. But the ace jack and the two queens and the king jack, the hands previous, all pots taken without any information given. You're going to go to Australia this year, Tony? Still one oh, 2000. Okay. And I hear the uh, tournament's pretty easy. Yeah. Any clown can win. And the can. In there with a pocket told pair for, for that. Achilles, and Tim has a decision to make. It. No. Pass. 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 You know, Roland DeWolf um, is perched on the edge of the yeah. table there oh, just watching yeah, everything. He's a good watcher, isn't he? Got to be lucky. Observe, observation, a quality not much really talked about. Uh, you know, as a quality that's necessary. But look at this now. Five, six, seven, three fives for Achilles okay. Kalakis. Yeah, this pot okay. three way and everybody's hit something. Straight draw for Bloom with two ways. A uh, pair and a straight draw for Goodwin, and of course the set for Kalakis. How does he want to play this with those straightening cards on board? Well, you know, I would I would check and hope that somebody around behind me bets so I could put some heat on this pot because this is a very dangerous flop. Yeah, well, he, he's checked. I mean, it, it's given a free card, really. And... Um, it, Interestingly enough, it's really made Tony 6, think he has the best hand because Tony has now hit top pair with the tens. So do you think Pass. Achilles will be raising here? Most certainly he'll raise, and it's going to put Tony Bloom in a very tough spot once again because he has the open-ended straight for backup. But another ten. Raise ten. He does exactly more, 16, that. Good call, 20. Jesse May. Adds another ten thousand to the pot. Yeah. I expect Tony Bloom to call here and try and improve his hand to the straight. Well, he'll know. He, he'd be pretty sure that a four or nine was winning, but would he? I mean, is there any way he thinks that Achilles might have a straight? Or does he think Achilles might have a bigger ten? Or It's hard to say. That board is very complicated, oh. and it's tough to work out. He could have any number of hands, and that's why Tony Bloom has just called. Achilles playing a dangerous game here as well, but uh, he survived. That there's no more straightening cards. There's no flushing cards. Check. Achilles probably looking to make a value bet between ten and twenty thousand, I would imagine. And uh, fifteen thousand. Between ten and twenty, he cuts the middle right down. Fifteen thousand. Nice bet by Achilles Kalakis. If Tony Bloom lays this one down. Well, what should Tony be thinking, especially based on the check on the flop? He should be thinking, what can I beat at this point? You know, does he have a busted straight draw? I can beat seven, eight, four, five. Uh, you know, my 10 is not a very good kicker. Very tempting. This is like walking in a candy store and seeing chocolate and having your mouth salivate. And it's very tough to walk out of that store with nothing in your pocket. Kalakis has waited this well to get paid off. It looks like it's right on that border. It Just really perfect. is. perfect. It really <laughs> is. It's just a matter. He's uh, up against one of the great decision makers of our time, though. And 15,000 is a pretty big percentage of Bloom's chips right now, isn't it? 
It, it, it certainly is. Tony Bloom starting this hand with about 80,000. So 15,000. How well, have you gotten them cameras? <laughs> almost 20% <laughs> of his stack. And uh, he values every chip, but Pass. this is just just a great lay down by Tony Bloom Bloom's once again. Folded. And I got news for you, he wants to know, but not bad enough to risk 15,000. And uh, Kalakis takes the pot. But uh, with that crafty smile, I, you know, he he can run circles around people if he gets the cards and they let him at it. It's been fast, furious, and uh, between Mark Goodwin and Achilles Kalakis, they're neck and neck. Absolutely. Mark Goodwin, uh, you know, right at the uh, last few hands there has just shot out in front. 120,000, won four hands in a row. If he has nines, it does come lower than a nine. Of course. Once every ten or so. Comforting flop. You've been making nines, isn't there? Eight deuce off. He says this because he's been running really badly for the last year. Pass. Pass. Six. Raised to 6,000 total. Well, now here's our first cool. real kind of step cool. out by Mark Goodwin, who raises it up with the ace three of hearts, called by Achilles with king 10, and now the action to Tim Flanders on the button with king queen. Yeah, I'm not sure if, um, if Mark limped or raised, but Either way, this is a big re-raise re for Flanders. 17,000 I believe he made it 6,000, called by Achilles, and now made it 16,000. I like the heat put on by Tim Flanders. This dark horse underdog demanding respect and commanding his position the button and takes home the pot. So everybody sort of making a statement at this table, Tim uh, Kenna. Tim Flanders is now your chip leader, and uh, it'll be rolling the Wolf's button. 2,000 to go on Goodwin. Well, two key elements is having the best hand, oh. and then second, Pass. and even more importantly, getting it to hold up. Tim Flanders in that last hand Pass. had the best hand, but had to play his cards perfectly to get it hold up. He, j he did oh. just that. Pass. Now to I the next it. action, Roland DeWolf on the button with the two fives. Um, I think it's safe to say at this point that Mark Goodwin is playing everything. <laughs> He's just limped in here with the eight nine. <laughs> is he just looking to catch a lot of flops cheap while it's the first level, Kenner? Well, Check. he's built his chip stack after Check. winning four pots in a row, okay. so now he's going to try and continue uh, and get on a roll, I think is what's really happening. But the roll is Roland okay. DeWolf, who okay. has two fives, has been perfect to this point, has yep. the best hand okay. so far as we go to the river. Um. It is a deuce. And uh, okay. 4,000. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Mark Goodwin, <laughs> it just, I mean, he can check twice, but I'll yeah. be darned if he's going <laughs> to check three times. <laughs> well, I'm surprised if uh, Roland throws this hand away, he should snuff this bluff out. You know, uh, I'd be surprised if he makes this fold, uh, especially for 4,000. <laughs> tell you what, you get he the does. feeling. If you've never seen Roland DeWolf play before, Kenneth, you get the feeling that he's like one of the most passive guys on the circuit. But, I mean, that is not true. <laughs> In about three levels from now, he's going to be ramming, jamming, running, gunning. But uh, bluffed out there by Mark Goodwin. Point. Mark Goodwin, uh, <laughs> very nice bet on the river to pick up that okay. uh, pot. I, I think Mark Goodwin might have bet there, Kenneth, because he would have been embarrassed to show the hand. You know, that's a good point, Jesse May. 8-9 <laughs> hey, off suit in first position, for crying out loud. Yeah, we said that uh, an important factor is protecting the information, which is not showing your cards. And sometimes you make a bet on the river, not only as kind of a bluff, but a semi-bluff, so you don't have to show your hand. He got the benefit of taking down the pot. He probably forgot he was on television. Anyone in your hand? I was. Such a great hit I have. We've played 20 hands here first. Mm -hmm. We're still Pass. 1 in 2,000. 
Well, as you said, Jesse May, these players, professionals, they play very fast. They know the standard plays. Uh, we're starting to see a little deviation from Raised standard play uh, up to this point, but uh, for the most part, it has been pretty standard. This is standard. Roland DeWolf bringing in a raise with the two jacks. Tony Bloom in another tough spot with Ace King. Seems like there's already always somebody in the heat box. And in this tournament, it's Pass. been Tony Bloom, and he doesn't want any more decisions. He the says, bet Ace was King. only 6,000, and That's Bloom right. has come over the top for 54 more. Right, and very aggressively, too. He did it very quickly, almost reverse psychology, as if to say, let's gamble, which is going to send the message to the oh, pro, Roland DeWolf, that I have a much it's bigger a hand than I'm hand. indicating. Can it take me through the thought process where Tony Bloom would make an overraise of that size? Well, he is also, he, there's multiple things going on, so it's, it, it's really difficult to explain. Right now, he is um, sending all kinds of messages to Roland DeWolf, a lot through body language, his quick action before the flop, it, which is adding to Roland DeWolf's no, confusion. No, I, I, I shouldn't really, I possibly could gamble with you, but if you, if you had aces, it would be like too good a move that you pulled on me. <laughs> <laughs> I would be too gutted to have been outplayed so badly. <laughs> Aces? What are they? Oh, roll I don't think you do have Aces. I think you've probably got Ace King, but... How about that read? How about that read by Roland DeWolf? Yeah. Right back at you, Tony Bloom. He can read the cards when they're face the down as well board. and not wanting to take the gamble. 4, that was great stuff. I think Is by both players... Never go a level without winning a pot, though. A must win a pot hand. <laughs> but it's nice and easy. You must win a pot or go home early. Nothing more than going home early. <laughs> well, luck exists in poker, and that's what makes it such a great game that anyone can beat anyone else. Um, the shorter the game, the more the luck element. So, in a, a, a satellite like today, where it's going to take just a few hours and go six goes to one, luck is the main part. But overall, poker is game of skill. You just have to play the hours to get that skill. Two things you don't often see in one hand. One of them, a ten times the bet over raise all in. <laughs> and another one, someone like Roland DeWolf calling out uh, what Tony Bloom had, having it beat and still folding. Right. You know, well, a top-notch pro can fold the best hand. Interest is, I can lose the battle and still win the war. And that was Roland DeWolf's approach in that hand. Yeah, and nice to see how both players managed to defuse what in 99% of the cases would have been an all-in matchup and a straight gamble. Right. Both of them still in, either one losing too many chips. Well, this is top-notch play, just as we expected. Players playing above the rim, making great laydowns in tough situations. We saw it with Tony Bloom, now with Roland DeWolf. It'll be interesting to see as the blinds increase and the pressure increases, who can maintain that discipline and patience and continue to make the great laydowns? After watching the dynamics at the table, who is the player you're most interested in right now to see how they handle the next level? Mark Goodwin, will he get happy chips as he has this lead and give it away? Will he tighten up and continue to make good decisions and proper bets? Yeah, Goodwin's been in just about every flop. Will he bleed or lead? <laughs> Let's see. I've seen the American one. I've seen almost all of them. But some of the people play so bad. Some of the people you think would be good, but they're yes. not no limit hold them cash players. You know, they play in that, a lot of them play like 4,000, 8,000 limit game. Big bet poker's different. Cool. Pass. Pass. Jeez, Bloom is off to the races here, limping in with the four or five suited. This is the fourth hand in a, in a row that he's entered. and. Flanders with an opportunity cool. to uh, race, race. put some pain down, but neither player charging the limpers tax. The wolf with the same hand in the big blind. Very interesting uh, conservative play by both Flanders and DeWolf. Checking King Queen. I'm sure we're going to get some action here, though, Check. as Tony Bloom Check. has flopped an open end straight. Both players in the Eight blind action. with top pair. Talk about fireworks. And what is. Flanders is going to check raise here. What is the wolf going to think? How big is this re-raise going to be? Raise. 
Well, you know, the story in this hand is how can anybody know what anybody has because there's been no pre-flop raising, there's been no definition, and this is a very tough spot for everybody to be in. This pot is going to be dictated by the flop action, which we still have a lot more to go. Action on Roland DeWolf. I like the way Wolf has played this because he's got maximum information right now, but is, is he going to get shut out and should he just pass? Good question. He doesn't have enough information. That's the point. You know, he doesn't know if Flanders has 6-7, whether he's flopped the set, or whether he has a queen worse kicker. These are the questions that are going through his mind right now. Tony Bloom is also sitting over there. Do I take the gamble and go for the straight with all this extra money in the pot? Very conservative and tight play by Roland DeWolf, folding top pair, second best kicker. And Bloom doesn't want to take the gamble. Tim Flanders taking home another pot. Three guys could have won that pot, and it is Tim taking it down. There's something very strong to be said about that. Was it the size of Tim's raise at the end of the day, 20,000, that did the dirty work? Well, it's the really the unknown factor of the small blind. You were thinking With no pre-flop raising, there's, he could have had anything, a set, two pair, and uh, his conservative uh, appearance. I don't, I don't felt either player felt that he was bluffing, so they knew he had you know, a hand. Wow. And as we look at the leaderboard, Jesse May, Tim Flanders vaulting out in front. Seven hands won in the early going. He's established a chip lead with 148,000. Yeah, well deserved. And little in bloom on the bottom in a bit of serious shape, whereas uh, Roland DeWolf hanging tight with average chips. If there is an underdog in this field, it would be underdogs, Kalakis and Flanders, perhaps Brian Little, two of them vaulting to the lead. Yeah, right now both of them are playing like mighty dogs. Well, maybe they have elevated their performance knowing that they were in a tough field and have been inspired and have certainly picked up the baton in leading this race. Tony Bloom, Ace King on the button. So far, he's been more like Diggity Dog, but uh, I think that the <laughs> Ace King is going to pump it here. <laughs> 4,000 plus how much? He's only got 56,000 in front of him. Raised up to 13,000. Well, I think uh, Tony Bloom Pass. would welcome some action here. Certainly, from Achilles Kalakis, who has King, Queen of Diamonds, this is a trouble hand in this spot. Well, I mean, Achilles will have no reason to know that Tony's so strong based on the fact that Tony's on the button, right? That's a good point. An innocuous flop for the most part of six, Check. 10 deuce all hearts. Yeah, all red, but wrong suit for Kalakis. Bloom though, king of hearts. And it uh, looks like oh. the straight shot to the center, Pass. which is gonna end this one clean and quick. Tony Bloom not wanting to give any free cards. Also making it very tough for a pair to call. And he had the redraw to the king high flush, should he get called. So nice play by Tony Blue. Tim Flanders has the early lead, but the big boys on the table are used to high stakes and big time pressure. So don't expect them to back away from this one without a fight. Let's get back to the action. It's always a surprise, always exciting, that's for sure, at the World Poker Open. First speak to Achilles. And the shipman passes shop up. Cool. Cool. That's a surprise cool. here. Roland DeWolf yeah, willing to let the blinds see the flop and also the initial limper wonder if he is trapping here or just playing conservative. He made that decision so quick not to raise with the ace jack, but this could be a limp fest, and it is four ways with this flop, mm. and that'll be scary for every party involved. Absolutely, seven, eight, nine, straight draws, flush Check. draws, Check. both Check. possible. Check. <laughs> Flanders has top pair, top kicker, but he doesn't even want to breathe on this pot. <laughs> He's up. Um, 
<laughs> and that 10 didn't make it any wow. easier. And, and how about Check. that 10 makes Roland Check. DeWolf the straight? Check. Yeah, with a straight flush draw. Wow. And if Tony Bloom calls this with the top pair bottom kicker, it would be very optimistic, uh, Kenna. Well, it just seems that this game puts certain players in tough situations with Pass. tough decisions. Cool. You know, a lot Look of the time. Mark and Mark Goodwin. <laughs> and Mark Goodwin <laughs> He's finds the call with Queen 5 somehow. Is he running a post oak bluff on the turn? He is completely <laughs> impassive. That 5 changed nothing, but if Mark Goodwin wants to have a bluff at it, now is the time. Check. Check. Wow, Roland's going to bet again. Mark Goodwin. Isn't he scared? Out there with the Queen 5 showing no respect for Roland DeWolf. He may show respect for this bet, though, as uh, Roland DeWolf fires another one over the bow at the crowd. Pass. Maybe get a long call from Tim Flanders here. But I think even Flanders will get wise and uh, muck this hand, and we'll be on to the next one. I mean, uh, I know a straight looks sort of strong, but with the uh, flush cards out there and four to a board out there, I mean, uh, the wolf could have been forgiven for checking that river kind of what influenced him to bet it. Well, you know, he, no other player showed any strength in the hand, so he was confident he had the best hand. He did. He wins the pot. Yeah, a nice little move up the ladder for the wolf into second place. I think that having um, a detached value of money is, is good at the, at the higher level, but at the, low, at the lower levels when you're starting out, I think you need to be disciplined and fearless at the same time. It's a, it's a combination of discipline and fearlessness. You need to be uh, ready to gamble, ready to um, do what you need to do. You, know, you need to step up to the plate when the opportunity arises. Like any sport, I mean in snooker, you can go around and smack a few balls around the table, but to, to be the best, you have to be really focused, disciplined. It's the same with, with poker, you know, you cannot mess around. So as we go back down to the action, the blinds will be raised to three and 6,000. Yeah, and this could be a serious level for the short stacks. I mean, uh, or is it, Ken? I mean, Right, absolutely, it's getting serious now. And we have not lost a player yet. And that is a sure, testament sure. to the excellent play yes, of everyone down there sure. on the felt. Tony Bloom's got about 68,000. How should he view this King Queen right now? Well, it is a tough spot for him because he certainly can't take a flop and lose more of those precious chips. The less you have, the more precious they are. Raise to 15,000. So he elects to raise, making it All right. about two and a half times 15,000. And once again, right behind him, Mark Goodwin wakes up with a hand. Yeah, it was not a very big raise from Tony Bloon, and Mark Goodwin must take that as weakness because he's got the hammer down with the ace queen here. Excellent point, Jesse. He has hammered Bloom. Us. This now the third time in a row that he has put the hammer to Tony Bloom, and how much. Can Tony Bloom take? Well, it's pretty serious, isn't it? It's 24,000. I mean, uh, Tony can't very well call and not put the rest of his chips in. So, uh, is he going to go? Well, I mean, there's just so much, you know. I think he's many chips. You know, as, you know, and remember that each of these players has such a measure of success. And when one person, and it's it's constantly come from Mark Goodwin, keeps putting the knuckle to you. It's hard not to try and in, in, in just your instincts say, hey, I want to lash out, but your hand just doesn't let you. And his reasoning knows that he probably doesn't have the best hand. But the lizard will put the cap on the cards and give it another thought. Are there any levels on levels going on here, Kenna? Is Tony thinking that my raise of 15,000 meant that I pass. was signaling I was willing to pass it, and Mark knew that, and he was playing with me, and yada, yada, but uh, he's folded it anyway. Multiple levels. Mm. 
And Goodwin has done very well to take the chip lead now. His jacket is off, his shirt is striped pink, and he is in very fine fettle right now. I mean, uh, what a great job he's done of changing gears here and there to get to this spot. Fast early, tight late, forged ahead. The chips at this table have moved precipitously kind of away from the one and two spots over to the other side of the table. Both Brian Little and Tony Bloom in serious shape with the blinds coming around. It'll be Little, the short stack under the gun here for 6,000. And only about six big blinds in his holding. Yeah. And this winner's club man not playing the queen four. Brian Little, not much to say and not much to play Pass. so far tonight. Pass. Cool. And uh, Achilles has done a lot of limping in from the button with these medium sort of aces. Roland the Wolf has done some shutdown bets from the big blind. Uh, will he do that again? Oh, is this Tim Race. Flanders? Race. Getting a bit of adrenaline to the head. 14,000 more oh my. total. And what is Roland the Wolf going to think about this? Well, Roland the Wolf looks down at King Queen of Spades. He's flat called before with this hand. See how he elects to play it this time. I, I mean, he, he's, he's just picked up something here, Kenna, because. Uh, 45,000. I mean, I feel like this is the kind of hand that Roland the Wolf is capable of folding, but he's re raised here, and he is dead right on the button. Flanders is at it. Well. Achilles Kalakis folding the button now only to worry about his Flanders and no concern there as he mucks. Nice play, Roland DeWolf. How did he know? But, uh, only DeWolf knows what the new knows. And with that pot, Kenna, he's moved into the chip lead, 149,000. Okay. A lot of poker players go into sports betting and uh, Unsuccessful and Tony comes over here and loses his chips to the folk. How about it? All decent. Uh, nice smile from Roland DeWolf. All, all it's the always all the decent, all the decent, a lot easier to smile like from in front, and that's where he's found himself recently. Roland DeWolf, a lot of successful results of late. He finished third in the $25,000. Uh, WPT final event at the Bellagio. He's the biggest money winner from the UK. Which a hard to be really successful. Yeah, I mean, you know, Roland would not only be considered Pass. the uh, informed player Pass. at this table, but Pass. one of the informed players in yeah, the world right now. Yeah, a pretty good World Series, two now, final tables easy. as well, and uh, he's been hot to try. Everything Rest. going Roland the Wolf's just way just the last couple years. Uh, he wrote about hey, poker for a long time uh, before becoming a professional himself. And you can read oh. books about poker or you can yeah, watch it each week here at the World Poker <laughs> Open and learn a lot from these guys. It was a shutout bet before the flop in the small blind from DeWolf and Little has called uh, with probably uh, the, the best fit. result he could have found in to. Roland's. <laughs> And uh, which is a straight race, <laughs> and little will be in or out on the basis. That the best time to react against of the basis of the flop turn and river. He's going to yeah. need a ten or a jack. Certainly does. Hasn't found it now, though. Not a terrible flop because a seven would now get him out as well. Counterfeiting Roland's pair, and uh, little <laughs> is on the edge here. A lot of scare cards for Roland Wolf. Attention. On the turn, it is a uh, five. Now a five even would counterfeit <laughs> him. This is the problem with the small pair, Jesse May. But anything else, a five, <laughs> any jack, any a ten, five, seven, any five, a jack or ten. Seven. As Roland uh, <laughs> is doing the commentating for me, let's just look at the river then yeah, the and see what happens. Got the outs counted. 
There you Jack go. on oh. the river. Good, 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 cool. And if the winner's the club will be going oh, mad about on that fish. one. O'Brien Little, the luck of the Irish on the seventh card. Well, just too many bullets to avoid. Too many outs, as you said, Jesse May. For uh, Brian Little to, to miss, and he deserves that, Bod. He's been sitting there very patiently, not really getting many hands to play. I think it may be his first pot, but uh, it was a heck of a stand he made called 28,000 with the uh, jack. <laughs> well, you know, he we, found we two cards those. above a 10, which has been a rare occasion for him. <laughs> nice pot for Brian Little. He's back in action. It was all over for when that. Brian Little yes, sending right. a message there, but he doesn't like being picked on. <laughs> <laughs> that was the third time Roland had raised his big blind <laughs> out of three. One of them is that guy with the big hat, isn't it? Paul? <laughs> And uh, limp in here from Kalakis with the ace. He's a nine. singer, isn't he? What will Flanders do with this hand? It looks pretty. Singer and a Jack commentator. Ten suited. Sure does. Uh, this is a multi-way hand. It plays better with more Danny? players in the field uh, than it does heads up. So the flat call correct okay. by uh, Flanders there. Nice, nice call. I've had no you know, action. Those two. Roland the Wolf has two right. limpers in front of him, but he asked Tony Bloom in the big blind how many chips he had before deciding to raise with the ace 10. Well, he does that just in case Tony wakes up with a hand. He wants to know how much it's going to cost him. Now, Roland the Wolf, on the other hand, has a has a type of a hand that plays he better heads up. up. So his player in front of him wants to play multi-way. He wants to play heads up and he wants the exact pressure. That's exactly what he's doing to Tim Flanders right now. Will Tim take the risk and take the flop or will he give it up to Roland DeWolf? Kalakis got right out of the way, but it'll be 16,000 on Flanders. Well, when you start to mind. put it that way, Jesse May, 16,000, and look at percentages to his whole stack, it's more than 10%. Which usually is the cutoff <laughs> oh, for do you trying to gamble play? and flop That's something. So he, do you see he folds oh, and uh, Roland DeWolf shows the best hand. Says, "I'm not robbing you. I'm not robbing you, boys. I'm just trying to play the best hand." I'm trying to cope with the possibility that it will happen. I'm out with dignity. Not with seven four off suit. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Raised all in. <laughs> I mean, there is only Fast. one thing that Tony Bloom loves more than having chips, which is having them in the center. <laughs> and he's stuck them straight he, in. He certainly has. Well, Tony oh, Bloom no! has Look. walked into Tim Flanders' pocket rockets. Cool. The timing needs adjusting. Well, that is the exact call. Bloom, oh, the perfect timing, timing is way off, and he will be the first surprise exit here uh, many times out of 10, Kenna James. Well, we don't know that, yeah, like you said, many times out of 10, but we still have five cards to come across in the middle. He's going to look to make a straight or a flush. He does have crackers, as we call them. Because these are two cards that definitely have potential to crack the aces. You can see he does have a 20% chance. I know when you have a 20% chance of rain here in London, it comes a lot more often than that. Let's see if it does for Tony Blue. <laughs> Nothing yeah, the seven, seven, four thousand. I just decided to try and pick up those nine, but he's run into the bullets. And he has helpful hints. And now needs to pray. And uh, those prayers are going to go unanswered because the three aces on the flop is going to pretty much be a quick walk down Broadway here for Bloom unless it comes runner, runner straight. Not uh, drawing dead, but drawing very slim. And now he is drawing dead. Is Tony Bloom? He says, "See you later." Commiserations to Tony Bloom. Uh, just not in the right spot or at the right time uh, tonight. But a hell of a player. Timing's everything. Yeah, it just went the wrong way. It just nothing seemed to work for Tony Bloom and uh, the Lizard. One of the top players in this format in this game will not be joining his brother in the semis. Tony Bloom, first man out the door. Tony, it just seemed like you were banging your head against the wall all night. Yeah, it was a real struggle tonight. I mean, every time I had half a hand, I was pushing a little bit and seeing a lot of strength behind me and having to pass uh, some hands. And, you know, you get right. short-chipped quite, quite early in this thing when that happens. But when you don't get the result, when you do make good decisions, how does that make you feel and how do you deal with that? 
Uh, it doesn't bother me too much. I mean, I'm here to try and when I do my best and then you mm -hmm. go home and there's another one coming up sometime soon. So f for me, the most important thing is trying to make the best decisions all the time and trying and doing the best thing to win. And mm -hmm. some days it's just not going to happen, whatever you do. The ultimate poker catchphrase has to be know when to hold them and know when to fold them. And it's the sign of a great player to be able to let those hands go when you know you're beat. Tony Bloom has really shown that characteristic tonight, making some massive laydowns, but when you run into pocket rockets, there's no way out except the door. Welcome back. Well, we've lost our first man, but there's still all to play for. Five still being dealt in. It's cards and chips in the air. Let's get back to it. Back to the action. It's Achilles Kalakis. He's got the ace, deuce of hearts. He brings it in. A couple of crabs in Flanders Craw. And that's an interesting decision from the chip leader. Right. Race. But uh, the wolf is back to business. Six One thing about Rowan the wolf, Kenna, he's never discouraged, you know? He just gets right back up on that horse after falling off. Four. Well, yeah, absolutely. He doesn't want to, you know, be starting in the wrong direction. So he's like a dog with a, on the marrow of the bone trying to get right back in it. Check. Flop of ace, jack, four. Check. Pair of Check. aces for Kalakis. He I, checks it over to Roland DeWolf. I think what's happened here, Kenna, is that Goodwin 10, called 000. before the flop, and that brought Call. Kalakis in. And now Achilles is sitting here with top pair, no kicker, and it's been a bet and a call. What should he think? It's almost like... Uh, you can understand why he's folded, can't you? Absolutely. And it's it's a very hand. tough, very tough to overcall in that spot. Actually, I believe Mark Goodwin was in the big blind, so he got... Uh, yeah, it's, it's good news for Goodwin. He's got the best hand now, and it's even better. Check. Uh, I was going to say it was Check. good news for DeWolf because he had some overcards. Now he needs a 10 to get out of this. He hasn't hit it. Goodwin is going to take this monster with pride. Yeah, and there's no way that uh, Roland can call this bet. So. His head on, or rather, his head in his hand. I'm sure he has a headache after those two. <laughs> yeah, that uh, that went completely pear shaped for rolling that hand, and uh, Goodwin taking a nice pot there. It was uh, it was kind of one of those pots that anybody could have won. Uh, DeWolf could have won it maybe before the flop with a big raise. Achilles could have won it on the flop with a big raise. Call. Brian Pass. Little coming in now with a flat call with the ace nine of spades. Call. Yeah. Nice. Uh, he's almost playing with a second life now because of the double up, but uh, would you like to see him raise that hand, Kenna? At least uh, put it in, in maybe double Check. the Check. amount of the big blind, Check. not to give them a free flop. Anyway, it's worked out for him. He's got top pair. Neither player has anything, so a quick bet here and probably two quick folds will serve the same uh, purpose. But uh, actually, Tim Flanders has got other things in mind. Price. He's going to throw a curveball at me. 30,000 more. And I guess he thinks that Brian Little is just making a standard co continuation bet and is putting him to the test to try and steal this pot away. And the reason he's doing that, he's thinking that uh, Brian Little is stealing and so that he will re-steal. So that's what his move is now, that uh, he's implementing the re-steal. But he will not do it effectively. Well, look I at Little. Believe. It's it's like he's gone from what can't I beat to what can I beat. And Kenna, there isn't much he can beat but a bluff. He raised all in. But um, <laughs> that never stops Brian Little. Um, what? 
pass. A decision he made, or was that automatic based on his stack well, size? Well, based on his stack size, you're exactly right, Jesse May. It is automatic. It was basically a play that didn't work from Tim Flanders. And you know, when you're out there playing poker, you're playing with imperfect information. So you try these plays, you, take, you, you try some creativity at different times. Some things work and some things don't. A lot working for Tim Flanders tonight, but not that play, not that time. Brian Little stacking a nice pot. Yeah, this young man from the Winners Club was the shortest stack at the table six ways, and now chip leader. Wow, from settle, from the cellar to the dweller in the attic is Brian Little suddenly at 150,000. This is the kind of hand, Can he, you wonder if he's considering the all-in. He's only got 64,000. Raised to 13,000. Does, does he like pass. to give himself as many options pass. as possible? Pass. Absolutely, and that does answer your question. He doesn't move in. He makes it 13,000, a little bit more than three times the big blind. And once again, yeah. an opponent faces a hand, ace-10, and you got to wonder if... If this is the moment where Roland says, you know, I can't take it anymore. I've got to put my chips in and gamble and not continue to bleed them off. Tim Flanders with the instantaneous all in. He does, and that usually shows strength. And uh, I think if Roland realized he was only at a 64 disadvantage, he might take this challenge. Uh, but... Um, the quick all-in and strong posture of his opponent and Tim Flanders might uh, give him cause to fold once again. He keeps counting. Uh, he, he's finding about 50,000 there, and he's decided to peel off five cards. Maybe not a, a factor of his frustration, also the fact that he knows he has to win this thing. Right, that's exactly right, and that he knew that coming in. He, he, he knows there's no second place and that you're going to have to gamble at some point. This is the point he's chosen. He's had enough. I'm taking a stand, and that's okay. You've got King Jack, Kenna James. Will it help him? It's a matter of life or death for Roland DeWolf. Big pot also for Flanders, who's hit the front or continued the lead with the pocket <laughs> well, Flanders actually, has kept the lead with the ace <laughs> on the board, matching the one in his hand. Ace, king, jack. Roland DeWolf is going to need a jack or a king And to the continue jack on. just left town, Kenna. Wow. That six wow. pairing up means right. it has to be a king and king only, or DeWolf is empty days. Here's the river. Okay. No days, yeah. school days, DeWolf down. Well, and I, I will tell you that Roland DeWolf is one class competitor. Recent third place in the WPT event at the Bellagio, but he's not going to be making the final table. The edge is out. Big surprises on this table. Not only Tony Bloom, now Roland DeWolf knocked out. And Roland, it was going so well and then just went all wrong. That's pretty much how I would sum it up. <laughs> <laughs> you had a real relationship going with uh, Brian Little in seat number one. I think four times it got folded around to your small blind and four times you raised him. Well, I think the correct thing uh, in this structure is to raise, if it's unraised, no matter what your holdings in the small blind. Um, but each time when he came back over the top, I felt he had a hand and laid down. You were playing uh, a very conservative game. We come back from the break, the blinds are up, and all of a sudden you switched gears at that moment. Why at that time? Because of the blind increase, or you just wanted to take charge of the table? What was going through your well, mind? I, I found that the blind increase meant I had to uh, try and take a few more blinds um, because it was getting more expensive each round. I felt the table was, was there for the taking, and then... Um, situations just occurred where I felt that I had right. the worst cards in the situation. And when I have the worst cards um, and I think I can't get the other player to pass, I, I fold. Early going, uh, you really uh, played tremendous poker and it was, it was a pleasure watching you play. Thanks, Give guys. us a pick. I think that Achilles is going to win. <laughs> 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 Always a pleasure to watch Roland DeWolf. Now we'll be watching the other four. Achilles Kalakis, says Roland. Let's see if it happens.
down to four, and this heat could be wide open. The chip leader right now, Tim Flanders, who's been up down, is now up again. And uh, with 195,000, he is going to be dangerous, Kenna. Has been from the start. I'm sure he will be as we continue on. I mean, uh, probably the hand that went most disastrously wrong for Tim Flanders uh, when he check raised little with no hand. Uh, in some ways, that's maybe the strongest point for him because it shows oh, he's willing to get nice. out there on a limb and try nice. and win chips. Excellent point, Jesse May. It means that he has creativity in his arsenal, which will serve him well should he get to heads up. This flop now blind on blind. And check. it's a good flop check. for Little uh, over cards plus the flush draw. But he's checked it. And that has backed check. Flanders into top check. pair. Check. Absolutely. And again, two quick checks. <laughs> I tell you, these guys both have massive hands. Little on a, a super draw, straight draw and a flush draw. Flanders with the top check. pair. Check. And uh, uh, when these two check. hands get turned over, I mean, mm -hmm. Little doesn't want to show because... Uh, it, it gives unnecessary information, which you don't need to give your opponents. They already have enough. You don't want to give them any more, and uh, let alone he gives Flanders the pot. I said no. I mean, 200,000 could have ended up in that pot, and uh, as it was... Um, I'm just confirming with you that it was six checks. As it was, it was uneventful, but there was certainly events <laughs> happening underneath. It was pretty uneventful, wasn't it? And here we are, Mark Goodwin now in the big blind action on Achilles Kalakis. Will he be? Raised to 20,000 total. And take advantage Pass. of the Achilles heel in Mark Goodwin in this pot who has four or five. Yeah, well, the blinds are now five and 10,000, so uh, this 20,000 raise was only double the blind and I guess that Check. has brought Goodwin in to find second pair. 5-8 deuce but Kalakis has got queen 10 of hearts for the flush draw and moved <coughs> all in and called. Yeah and uh, Goodwin is not in good shape here even though he's got the best hand uh, with the two fives Kenna Oops. James. Two over cards plus it's the flush nice draw I would imagine is the favorite. Yeah you know I mean I am shocked how quick these chips go in the pot but maybe, you know, the cork is off the bottle and the pressure is released. The turn card, a three giving now Mark Goodwin the open end straight draw to go with it. He doesn't need it. He already has the best hand, as you can see. 68% favorite to hold up. Galakis needs a queen, a 10, or a heart. Baboom. It is the three of hearts. And Achilles Kalakis makes the flush on the oh, river. It was just one card lighter than I thought. <laughs> Mark's got a great wow. How about Mark Goodwin said he could see it coming like a bus, and he was in the middle of the road with nowhere to go. He got run over, and wham, his chip stack is suddenly flattened and finds himself now at the bottom. Yeah, I mean, Goodwin would have gone well to the chip lead there, but as it is, he's short. <coughs> Whereas Kalakis stacking, chirping, loving life. Wham, bam, no thank you, ma'am. Kenna James, that pot pretty much determined between Goodwin and Kalakis who was going to be going forward. Well, I got to tell you, that was a uh, shocking development, how quick those chips went in the pot. It's like, you know, the two top pros are gone. Let's get in there and gamble it up. But uh, I got to tell you, this uh, Achilles Kalakis, very successful in business and now in poker. You got to wonder what is the correlation, you know, the successful tendencies in both, you know, do they transfer over? It's certainly uh, showing that they do tonight. Seems like these guys are now playing big blind poker. What's going to be most important if uh, someone wants to separate themselves from the four? Well, just, you know, maintaining their composure, maintaining their discipline and patience in the face of adversity is what's going to make the difference in who's going to come out on top. Can't sweat if you want the guild. Let's see who's got the mustard. Still four, but Goodwin in a very short position on the basis of a flush on the river. And uh, 
His head is down now, Kenna James. He knows what he has to do, but can he do it with only 55,000? That is Flanders, who will uh, be in first position, although there's only one Hi. big blind here because... Pass. Oh, excuse Hi. me, there is two big blinds. There's two blinds, and Mark Goodwin is in the small blind and uh, has moved all in with the ace. And um, they're going to count it up. Yeah, we'll see here if... Uh, no. You know, I think Flanders limped with the two sevens, cool. and Four. now... 45. 45. Mark Winwin cool. just finds an ace. That's what he was looking for, any ace or a pair to get his chips in the middle. Yeah, it was he found it, but again, uh, against two sevens, he finds himself a uh, significant underdog, over two to one underdog. He's going to need some help. Goodwin looking, go to the flop. Yeah, looking for a race, but he's found himself in a bad situation, needing that bullet, or he is out. And there it is, a bullet. The first real uh, adversity that Tim Flanders has faced doesn't make Mark Goodwin that happy after losing that last pot. Uh, he, he finds it hard to show some joy, but uh, he's just got to dodge one last card, make sure it's not a seven. He'll double up and at least still have some hope in this match. It'll put him over 100,000. Tim has gone very tight-lipped here, and... Uh, best laid plans. Yeah, as Tim says, best laid plans. Can I, it was almost like uh, Tim played there to get that limp call all in. He got it, it was in beautiful shape, and still, Mark stacking the chips. Down, up, around for Goodwin, and Mr. Cool will have to feel like he's well in this one. He's not far from average. Well, look at the face of Mark Goodwin, and you get to know what it's like to be a poker player. You saw the jovial, <laughs> you know, kind of uh, easygoing chatter early, but after you've been through the fire and the ups and downs that this game can bring you, <laughs> it uh, definitely That's wears on you as uh, he Race. gives a pinch to the nose. It's not easy emotionally. Much easier when you have two kings as Brian Little does here. Yeah, all of a sudden, Pass. Brian Little starts Pass. to pick up some hands. Pass. He makes a raise, playing very straightforward, standard play by Brian Little, and that is getting him the chips. He was patient and disciplined early. Again, the same, playing straightforward, standard poker, and that is what has got him 166,000 in chips. Quietly... The underdog, Brian Little, sneaking closer and closer no, to the chip matter. lead. But it doesn't matter because we're, <coughs> we're still... Kind of average chips right now, 150,000. And no one is yes. more than 30,000 away from that total, up or down, uh, which makes it a very wide open match. Oh, it stage. sure nice. does. With that nice. suck out by Mark Goodwin, which he may be entitled to have had after uh, losing uh, most of his chips in the previous hand, this has really tightened up. It's gone limp check in the blinds, and Little getting the free flop with the eight check. deuce, but it's check. of check. no use. Flanders, two pair on the flop, just trying to get action any way he can. Check. And, uh, and uh, that's check. gonna worsen his cause, even though it helps his hand. <laughs> Giving him queen's fall is not gonna leave his opponent with much of anything to give him action with, so he mucks. Flanders picks up the pot, shows the <laughs> monster that the board created out of uh, Queen Four. You know, Roland the Wolf referred to him as a loose cannon, and these players are also giving him a wide berth. Pass. folded around to the button, and Flanders rather Pass. pained with the small Race. ace. Race. What's that about? Uh, he's folded the ace five, but Little has raised with it. It's almost like Flanders oh. didn't believe he could be believed. And uh, Goodwin with the quick call, we're playing a flop here, blind on blind. Now Goodwin feeling you have to play the hand you're dealt. This is what he's being dealt of late. So he will try and gamble and uh, try and catch a flop, which doesn't Check. work for him either. 10-4-4. Four, four. Check. Shows Check. the discipline to check. I think he would have been called by Little, so that's a nice check. Well, uh, 
Little opted for no continuation. He's giving very eerie eyes over there to Mark Goodwin. Well, he's suspicious, and certainly now he would call with an ace. And all of a sudden, Brian Little looks like the detective who knows who's robbing and who's not, and it's being effective. He's called off bluffs. He's had some hands, and he's built that stack and has settled nicely into second place with 166,000 in chips. Yeah, Little played that pop like he was trying to smother a chicken. No, I said I didn't want to play it, the S5. Did you hear that for a comment? I'm getting too many hands and don't want to play. It's that. almost as if he no, heard you and he's getting a laugh fine, yeah. off of smothering the chicken. Not a quality that you normally That's talk about so much, I mean, in No like, Limit Hold'em, totally totally but totally smothering the chicken has worked for Brian <laughs> Little so far Pass. tonight. I've got too many hands out before. Pass. Cool. <laughs> you raise? No raise. Blind on blind here. Goodwin with a little limp in to Calacas's 8-4. And there's only 20,000 in the kitchen. Action will be on Marky Mark. That's a nice flop. Two pair. Check. Nine, nine, ten. Check. Absolutely. Check. Two pair. If it comes a jack. Good win. And it has. Check. Kalakis Check. has made right. bottom Check. straight. Good one with the two pair. What are these guys up to? Well, good win suddenly with a glance up at Check. the dealer, as if to say, I can't believe what card Check. fell there, was slow playing and straight. Straight. slow played him right into. I can't show mine because it's just too embarrassing. I'll let them all <laughs> laugh about it later. Like <laughs> <laughs> we can't laugh later, we're laughing now, not at you, but with you, Mark, Pedophiles. at your sense of dry humor. <laughs> It's not going to say anything. I paid more because I wanted to shoot myself after I <laughs> get past the flop. Because guess what? You had one out and it was a jack. Yeah. Yes. Even runner runner didn't help you. Only jack. That's how bad it was. So I waited till it went behind and then I paid you. Well, oh. it's good to I'm going all in. I'm not calling anymore. All in. Be self uh, analytical yes. in your game. A limp in here from Little. All in move. One thin blue stack from Mark Goodwin, who's found a suited ace. And uh, it's a pretty big raise. It's about 60,000 more. Little's actually got a better hand here, Kenneth. He does, but he does not have position. And how about Mark Goodwin now exacting a little heat that's coming off his head from that last hand onto Brian Little? Will he be able to sniff this one out? This one would take Sherlock Holmes to sniff this out and make this call. Does he have the eyeglass? He does! Yeah, I mean, it was kind of like reverse psychology because uh, Goodwin was muttering before the hand was dealt that he was now on tilt. And uh, Little well, believed him. Brian Little exacted the truth out of that statement and now trying to exact the rest of Mark Goodwin's chips the reason he's got a small, uh, only a small advantage is a lot of these pots will be split. Let's see if what happens with this one. Queen, seven, deuce. Mark Goodwin needing a five or two cards above a six. Yeah, the flush draw actually has really helped Goodwin. All of a sudden, he's going to win this more times than Little does. Thank you, Jesse May. I did not pick up that second spade. And, uh, king. Now, any spade or any card above a six will split it. Any spade will or a five will win it for Mark Goodwin. Yeah, that's about the story. It's a host of possibilities, but the split, perhaps the most likely, once the turn came down, and that's what happened. We're going to dissect this one seven ways and then one of those dies, isn't it? You get called with I six in the first instance, and then the second instance, you can't even win. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mark Goodwin talking before this heat, Kenna said, you must win and lose with the same brain. And uh, 
Well, you see that uh, the disgust over his face, and I got to tell you, when you play at a high level as a professional, and you've had the success that a lot of these guys have, and you make a mistake, it just gets worse, doesn't it? It, 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 it you just get so huh? self-critical and and so. Um, you know, he's really just being self-deprecating here over that one hand in which he flopped two pair and let his opponent back into the straight. And he is just not letting him, letting up on himself. Mark, give yourself a break, but almost self-destructing there, moving his chips in with the ace five. Let's see if he can recoup and regather. I'm not gonna go well, That hand is better than last. First he said I'll go. Because all in other stuff, I can't. He's actually Race. rethought yes. his decision oh to. 40, I think his 6, first instinct was to go Race all to 40, 6, in. 000. And now he's decided to put half of them in. Pass. Well. But he's committed, isn't he? He's probably committed. Oh, wow. Or should be committed as all of a sudden. Nothing going right for Mark oh. Goodwin. Tim Flanders okay. finds the Cowboys two kings right time behind to think him. About this. Pass. I think he might just be calling. I don't know. You Three, are the card rack yeah. of the day. <laughs> so I call. And a call. Yeah, I mean, uh, Mark Goodwin was, I think, oh, just dear, leaving mate. those back, but never intending to much. fold, and uh, he is in trouble again. Well, the bullet saved him once before, can it again? He does have one bullet in the gun, in the chamber, is it locked and loaded on the barrel? We will find out as we go to the flop. You ever seen an ice on the flop? Texas Tim has been a piranha <laughs> this evening. <laughs> He's the answer. Well, even a king could scare Eight, six, him. Four, there. Could be a king one heart. heart. He's got running Except hearts. Not being no. a king of or an nice. ace. Give me a or some type of backdoor straight yeah, to wrong. stay in this match. Well, you, you, don't, you don't want it much in your favor, do you? No, I don't know. <laughs> just like to win, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> the 10 on the turn changes things slightly. Now there's two 10s, which will get Goodwin out as well as the ace. But he is gasping for his last breath. Well, here. he wants out. He either wants out of the studio or out in double up. But it's not going to happen. It's a river eight. River Deuce, rather. Mark Goodwin, a great person and poker player, out in fourth place. Yeah, Mr. Cool was playing a great game until he was iced up by uh, Kalakis's flush, and from there, melting down south. One-time chip leader and Mr. Cool at the table sent packing by Tim Flanders Cowboys, and we've lost the three favorites. Like 10 pins, the favorites have been bowled out. One, two, three. Now Mark Goodwin going down. And Mark, just not your day in there. No, it's, uh, it happens like that, doesn't it, every now and then? I mean, uh, like I said, we had a steward's inquiry on the shuffling machine, see if it was his wife actually under the table shuffling. <laughs> <laughs> some of the days, some guys run good, don't they? Well, you got a great attitude. You're kind of a philosopher about the game, Mark. I know you talk about you have to have some luck, you know, versus the skill. I just wonder, are there some times when you know what the right move is, but you still think maybe you shouldn't do it because I'm just going to get snapped off? Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm, uh, at the end there, I'm sitting with ace, ten of hearts. <laughs> There's four of us playing. <laughs> I've got one guy who's got to make a decision. <laughs> What do I do? I'm thinking I should pass this. This is bad. <laughs> I need aces to even think about playing. Sure enough, he's got kings. Well, you know. Wow. Well, sometimes you just run into a yeah. buzz saw. You're on the. Yeah. You're on the. You're on the table, and you're just going towards yeah. that buzz saw. And there's nothing you can do. Yeah. You know, I got to tell you, uh, Mark. I've played with you all over the world. I know you're a little frustrated uh, at the result, but you're a hell of a player and a good representative for the game. And uh, it was a pleasure watching you in action tonight. That's that's from the guy in the hat. <laughs> <laughs> you win and lose with the same brain, in your own words, Mark. <laughs> Texas Tim, it's been his day so far. Will he take it through? Just three left. A trio of poker prowess at this table. And KJ, Tim Flanders is encroaching on 300,000 in chips. Uh, how tough is he gonna be to beat from this stage? Well, very tough. And not, he, he was the dark horse, but now he is the lead horse as we come 
around uh, the back oh. turn. Yeah, and, I mean, he's done nothing. The home stretch. He's, he's done nothing to suggest that he is going to uh, slow down at any stage. Well, and we saw that little wrinkle to his game that shows he has the creativity and the gamble. So he has all cylinders. Will they all fire? Or will yeah. Kalakis, Achilles Kalakis, one that we haven't talked a lot about. He's Check. maintained a quiet posture at 15, this table, 000. known as the Don. Very successful in business and now Cold. as entertainment and fun, making a good showing here tonight. Achilles has bet the flop on bottom pair. Brian Little's called with the flush draw. And uh, that's a good check. card for Kalakis, but he won't know he's ahead, will he? All right, I'll check it. Check, both checked. He'll give the free card. I think Let's Little see. might be able to buy this on the river no matter what check, comes. Check, check. But uh, three. he chooses not to, and 50,000 is a very good pickup for Achilles here. Plus the nine. I mean, that's a big pot. That is nearly 10% of that. chips mm. in play. I know that now. That was a key pot. Uh, you know, even the small the ones are big now play, with the, the, the blinds uh, of some significance. Uh, each, and remember, every other hand, you're in the blind, either the small blind or the big blind. So uh, the pressure will mount. The action will obviously pick up because you have to continue to pick up those blinds otherwise they will melt your stack Raise. very quickly like butter 15, on a warm ball, day 25 total 25 Pass. ball from brian little 15,000 on the chip leader now tim flanders and king queen way ahead at this juncture cool. and uh, what's tim's idea here is he just trying to I'm show that he's not going to be bullied or is, he, is it too cheap to fold? Well, Tim Flanders, a very good player. Uh, I underestimated him. He plays both cards and situations. He's going to test Brian Little out here and try and get in Check. cheap and uh, flop a surprise Check. hand. Does not happen thus far. He's gotten into Brian Little's head a little bit with the check check, but Little, that diamond's given 15, him a 000. flush draw. And if Brian chooses to make the move... He does. He does uh, peel. Wants to peel off the river. To see if he'll make the flush. Does not. He makes a pair of kings, giving him kings and nines. And now an ill advised bluff. 35,000. Flanders not wanting to give up this pot, making a what looks like probably a vain attempt at a pickup. I'm sure Brian Little will work this out, make the call, and take home the pot. Yeah, I'd have loved to see what would happen if the king hadn't come. I mean, <laughs> Little's still capable of calling there. He does play in the Winners Club in Belfast. It's a bit of a crazy place. King High wins a lot of pots up there. But uh, with the two kings, Ken, it's mm -hmm. pretty much automatic, isn't it? It, it really is. But you do get, uh, while he's thinking, uh, you do get an idea of why uh, Tim Flanders played this hand. He plays situations. You can see he had, uh, at no time was playing his hand, he was playing the player. And that is effective many times unless they make a hand, which Brian Little has done here. And for some reason has great cause of concern. Cool. Cool. But does finally make the call. And uh, Flanders not even wanting to uh, mm. show his hand, which I don't. So you had a diamond. Him. King, I didn't. As we take a look at the leaderboard, there it is, Brian Little from Ireland, two hundred and twenty-four thousand. Tim Flanders settles back into second. Achilles Kalakis, who has also been quiet, maintains in third place. A strong 179,000. Flanders has not only won 20 pots, he's played 40% of the hands here, Kenna. He has been a one-man wrecking show. And uh, well, he's down to mostly blues right now. He's still got enough chips to make a difference, and with that kind of hand, uh, he's going to be an added man. Certainly is. Uh, counting out a raise from the button is Tim Flanders. Ten plus how much? 
Uh oh, Little's gonna get in terrible shape here. If he moves, I don't think Flanders is backing down. Little's got that hard look about him. He is as he is eyeing. Tim. It's a big raise. It's 40,000 more. It's 50,000 straight. Well, that will give you cause of concern and uh, thoughts to ponder. You know, one. All in. He's gone all in. Wow. Pass. And Tim Flanders is going to call. Look at that. Look at that look. Straight down an arrow. How good is Ace Jack here? Well, you know, there's a few hands that uh, he would be in a coin flip with. Two sevens, two eights, two nines, two tens, anything else. And he would be in bad shape except for Ace 10. And Brian Little hasn't shown that gear, so it's hard for him to put him on a weaker Ace. So that does give uh, Tim Flanders cause for concern, and uh, he will go into the think tank. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess he could fold here and still have 150,000. Does he want to do that? Well, he'll give it some thought, and that's very important uh, and a quality that a lot of top players do. They want to really uh, consider their options and not just act uh, impromptu. And the interested observer standing up out of the hand, Achilles Kalakis, waiting to see what develops here. Well, Achilles is going to kind of be a beneficiary no matter what happens, I guess, Kenna. Yes, because he will be out of the cellar and into second place for sure. But Tim Flanders, no matter what develops. decision of the tournament, and as you said, Little has the only holding where Flanders would be a massive favorite. Well, and you look at Brian Little, you wonder how can he be so confident? He's really playing position at this point. He's raised the button knowing that Flanders would raise with a lot less than Ace Jack or Big Pair. And so it's reasonable to think that he has the best hand. We know, but uh, he didn't know he was in such poor shape. And I'm sure he would be a little bit more, more nervous if he knew what Tim Flanders had. Now, all of a sudden, the clock is called Flanders on the clock. He's on a 30-second clock that's going to add to the pressure. Too much. Makes the fold. Wow. Risky play by Brian Little. It works out. Points. Takes a key, key pot. They have in Northern Ireland the same word for both ace-10 and pocket aces, the translation being definitely willing to risk your house on. <laughs> Ken, uh, how about that play by Brian Little? Logical or, or a, a, a bit aggressive? <laughs> Wow! Hold on to your hats and glasses. This no e-ticket ride here, my friends. The action has picked up. A lot of questions to be answered. Can Tim Flanders come back from this misstep? And uh, can uh, Achilles find that hand to take his turn at the lead? Or will it uh, be Brian Little, who's paced himself perfectly to this point, and can he bring it home? It seems like the big advantage so far in this game is getting the chips in first, uh, mm -hmm. or all in first, maybe. Well, that's always a key point in no limit hold'em. You don't want to be the caller. You want to be the aggressor, and uh, that's certainly proven true tonight. Who is it going to be? Brian Little poking his nose in front all in to win. Pass. Well, we sometimes Anyways. get some surprises, and we certainly have another one tonight. Marys. The three major TV pros out. All in. Galakis with ace 10 is going against Tim oh. Flanders. Well, this is kind of ugly here. Kalakis may have waited too long to move. At this stage, Flanders actually ahead with the deuces, and Achilles needs to hit an ace or 10 to stay in. 13 chips. This is not pretty. Achilles needs the double up. He needs a card. The Don looking for a favor now from the dealer, looking for that ace or 10 to the turn we go. 
Not a terrible card for Kilius. Extra no. outs, Kenna. A lot of extra outs, Jesse yeah, May. Any heart. He also got a king for a straight, a 10 or an ace, a bevy, a buffet of outs. To the river we go. Ooh, <laughs> bullet hits. And uh, Kalakis doubles up. Well weighted there. It was a pretty gutsy call by Tim Flanders. Big call, too, with just the two pad. Ooh, and that's exactly what Kalakis says. A breath of fresh air for the Don, who shoots the bullet, calls the shot. <laughs> a nice smile and a sigh of relief. Don't hold me to that, sir. <laughs> I haven't got any the cards play yet. <laughs> has been patient and disciplined here, three-handed for quite some time, waiting to see what will give. It's amazing. Brian Little has just won two pots in a row, and he's Pass. back Call. to half the chips Call. in play again. I mean, it, you know, this is a what have you done for me lately. No worries. Well, story and why has he just limped with two deuces? I mean, there's gonna be overcards on the flop here. This is uh, surprising. Does he think that Kalakis could not pass on the flop check, check, or before the check. flop? Well, that possibly could be, and he did not want to invite check, a check, race situation. Is exactly why I think he's played this conservatively. You know, Achilles has now made a pair. Check and uh, has the best hand here. Yeah, this was a gift. All in. All in. A gift to the Don, which he's not going to uh, take for free. Wow. Did, did Brian Little just decide that Achilles could not in, yeah. fold any huh? two You're cards there? Me in. Very well could <laughs> no, be, Jesse May. Uh, <laughs> nice observation. Last year, seeing two aces. Big blind yeah. to be posted. Last year, I remember seeing them. Seeing them. So I remember seeing them last year too. It was on TV. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> all in. Raised all in. All in for Tim Flanders. Two fives on the button. Brian Little with a seven of spades in the small blind. This could be it. It, it really seems like Little's going to convince himself to call here. This is the biggest hand he's picked up to a raise in a long, long time, Kenna. That's right, but it is a major chip movement. Very big decision for Brian Little. You hate to be the second one in. That's the problem. You like to be the aggressor because when you're the aggressor, you have the option that your opponent can fold. When you're the caller, you do not. You either have to have the best hand or make the best hand, and that's the situation he's faced with here. Call. It'll call. be a he straight call. race. It's happened. He's called. And Kalakis is not going to call with a hobo's oh, chance in heaven. Pass. It's a seven of spades against two fives. For a major development here, we go to the flop. I mean, the only difference is that Little has 100,000 back. Beyond that, both these boys playing for the keys to the title. Queen, eight, eight, two fives are holding. Brian Little looking for a seven or <laughs> an ace or a queen would also give him the pot. We go to the turn. Oh, wow. It's an ace. Oh, wow. That is huge for Northern Ireland, Belfast, Brian Little, and the Winners Club, and Texas Tim, who has really left his heart on this table. I don't think I've ever seen can play as courageously as he has tonight is down to two cards. Such a shame, unless a five comes, it does not for Tim Flanders okay. to walk out of this right. and away from this table after playing so well. It's come down to just two. We're heads up and each of these guys will be feeling the pressure with entry into the half a million dollar prize pool for just the winner. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. We're down to heads up, and though Brian Little may have the chip advantage, I wouldn't write off Achilles Kalakis. He's made final tables in front of the cameras before and won 50 grand in cash in the poker den on TV. So if anyone will thrive under the lights and the lens, it's the Don. These two have been through and then some, Kenna James, and now the marathon 
spinning here. Brian Little from Belfast on one side. The chip lead, but he still has to get through. The long, thin stack of Achilles Kalakis. What's it going to come down to? I know we're going mad now. Well, most likely cards. Whoever gets the uh, right cards to play at the right time will probably take this title home as we go to the tail of the tape and look at it head to head. I mean, they've both won just about the same number of hands. Difference being that Brian Little won the last one, and it was a big one. As you can see, uh, Achilles Kalakis has yet to take his position on top. Will he get there? Or will Brian Little come from behind to the middle of the pack, take the lead, and bring it home? That's what we're waiting to see as we go down to the belt. Both these players have shown speed at different times. A lot of respect between them. They've been playing for quite a while. And... Uh, 15 and 30,000, what should Achilles be thinking? Is there a mental line he's going to draw on the sand? Well, it should already be drawn. He needs to gamble, gamble, gamble. Right now, that's not what Brian Little wants to do. He wants to whittle away at that stack, make sure it's even smaller before he gets the chips in the middle and not give his opponent any chance to surmount a comeback. So knowing that, Kalakis should move in at every opportunity and force him to gamble. You know, can, uh, I mean, cool. these two have cool. been playing all mm. night, and so mm. few times so has Achilles had position oh, on uh, Brian's yeah. side. Yeah. Now he's going to have it half okay, the time. Now. You're flat. Right now, from the button, he's going to have it for the rest of the hand. Well... As you can see, Kalakis with the best hand here elects okay. to just flat call. And that gets him Checked. in trouble. Checked. Yeah, Little's got a huge flop. Top Brian pair flush Little draw. flops top pair. And now he's made a flush, the lowest Checked. flush out there. And he diamond beats him. He's got... How will Kalakis be thinking about his pair of fours? There's 60,000 in the pot. Check. Check. I think Little might just check it on the river, hope to induce a bluff, or else just take the pot. Uh, I think that is the most likely course of action. Check. The board check. reading sure flush. Yeah. I'm playing that. The three of diamonds plays. It's low, but it counts. And uh, that's a pretty big <laughs> swing. <laughs> These players have just gone from two to one to three to one in the chip differential. And that's just with the blinds. Huh? Oh, yeah. What do you want to do now? Huh? What do you want to do now? I've got a feeling it's all going in somehow. Nice one. Achilles has lost move. two Ooh. of the first pots. Heads up. Does he have to move? Well, he you will. Leave it the next time. I didn't realize it was this. Might good. he try no, to right. limp trap? Or is there no way? All in. Braced all in. No limp here, says Kalakis. He moves all in. Brian Little, a little bit of a decision here with Queen <sighs> 10. May elect to try and end it here, or will he fold and. Give Kalakis the blind. Call. He's calling. Call. Call. He's yeah. calling. Kenneth, did he just call. decide that there were a lot of hands Kalakis could have done this with that he beats? And uh, this one point. he's not in terrible huh? shape against, but it's a great situation for Kalakis. Couldn't have a better shot to try and get even here, and right. Little's got a shot to win it. He just decided to take this opportunity to knock his opponent out here. Let's see if he does it as we go to the flop. He'll need a queen or a 10. <laughs> I'm on the king. Kalakis no. with the lead as we go to the flop. Ace for four. He not he only maintains his now. lead, huh? but improves it. <laughs> because now, Brian Little will need running cards for a straight or repeat queens or tens. It's not going to come as the nine falls on the turn. Kalakis doubles up. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, that queen, a harmless river. Too close for my liking. Yeah. Ace is up. Nice and 250,000, all of a sudden, it has been flattened out. Thank you. Okay. No Absolutely 
Down the back stretch we go. Achilles Kalakis winning the first major pot. Heads up, look at that tail of the tape. 33 hands won by each player. The betting frequency similar, the chips similar. We're coming down the home stretch. It is neck and neck. Cool. Olin. Quick call, call from Achilles Kalakis. So quick, King 10 could be in trouble here, Kenna. It sure can. Oh, my. It is. Oh, my. Wow. And this is exactly no clubs. what I was saying earlier, that Kalakis needed that one big hand to make the difference. And he found it here. Pocket Kings, the two Cowboys. Let's see if they hold up against Brian Little's King 10 of clubs. Little has a short chip lead, but it's not going to be worth a farthing. Wow. Queen 10 6. He is that much closer to cracking the Kings. 110 away for Brian Little. He's played so great thus far. Can he play the luck card and pull the 10? On the turn, it is a 3. Two cards in the deck here. Two cards in the deck left as we go to the river. Ten of diamonds. Brian Little will be very crippled. He won't be out. It oh. is no! a ten. Well done. And that is Achilles Kalakis. He manages in shock to stick his hand out. He can't believe it. The Cowboys cracked by the King Ten. Brian Little from Belfast from the Winners Club is going to the semi-final. Two kings, a huge hand against King 10 suited, but not when two tens are on the board. That 10 on the river catapulting Brian Little. Three tens over two pair into the semifinals. The satellite qualifier from Belfast wins his seat in the semifinal. He's over with Kenna and Jesse. Last man standing, and I imagine he can barely walk. Congratulations, Brian Little. Thanks, Jesse. You took down some of the toughest names in the game tonight, and you were the first serious short stack on the table. I mean, uh, what was your mindset then? Just said if I got any cards, I'll just move all in, you know, and try and double up. And then when I doubled up, I was talking to Marty, I said, an hour double up, and I'm, I'm back in the game, like, you know, and I just went off more. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did it. You're into the semis. No telling how far Belfast is going to go. So join us next time on the PartyPoker.net World Open.